Today I'm going to take an interview with my dear teacher, Vladimir Maikov, who introduced me to Anna Weiss's work many, many years ago when I was doing my transpersonal course with him. And basically, we can all be thankful to him because otherwise I would never be here doing this webinars, doing the work that I'm doing. <laughs> so I thought it would be great to reconnect with this wonderful person who is the pioneer of uh, the transpersonal psychology in Russia. And he is not just the teacher, trainer, author. He was the one who published and edited over 100 books in transpersonal psychology, the one who brought all this knowledge to Russia. And he is also a senior researcher at the Russian Academy of Sciences uh, at the Institute of Philosophy. And he is, of course, the president of Transpersonal Association of Psychology and uh, Psychotherapy. And uh, above all, he is a film director. And this is very special new uh, thing, I guess, uh, for Vladimir, because he is the one who made beautiful documentaries interviewing the top, top, top names and people from spiritual world. And ideally, I would like to ask Vladimir to let us watch some fragments from his wonderful films that are already available. One of them is Dance of Infinity. The other one is Tools for Evolution. And then The Secret of Carlos Castaneda. But today I've invited uh, Vladimir to talk about meditation, spirituality, and tools for evolution. Now there, because this is one of the film projects of uh, Vladimir. Uh, the second uh, film of my evolutionary trilogy. I would like to start with a simple question. I would like to know, after a series of interviews, because your documentaries are based on series of interviews with people like Stanislav Grof, Ken Wilber, Deepak Chopra, Dalai Lama, Deva Primal, Alex Gray, and other famous people in spiritual world or among spiritual seekers, I'm sure along the way, you not only verified some of your personal knowledge, you learned a lot from all the people you were talking to. So I'm inviting you to help us uh, gain some light on the main terms or words like spirituality. So what is spirituality to you? In the Upanishads, you know, there is a question, who are you? Who are we? And that, that answer again in Sanskrit is Tattvam Asi, which means you are it, or sometimes the translation is more archaic, thou art that, with a capital T. Uh, they are the Chardin said something similar. He said, we are not uh, uh, human beings having spiritual experiences, we are spiritual beings having human experiences. In my opinion, there's a lot of beautiful spiritual experiences that we have every day, but most people don't even recognize them. Then they don't, they're not aware of them because their minds are too busy. Enlightenment is just to be present. It's instant present. And to sing a raga, you have to be completely present. And there's nothing else. There's no fear, there's no hope, there's no family, there's no nothing but the love of the moment. And you are connected with your true condition. How to be free by waking up. Because that's what enlightenment does. It gives you radical freedom from being identified or caught in any individual thing. Why? Because you're all of them. So you are radically free. You are one with everything. Your being is full of the entire universe. You are saturated with everything. There's nothing outside of you. Spiritual seekers may have an experience of wholeness. The normal structure of myself as separate crashes. And you, you look around and, and your experience is that this is all one thing. This is all 
part of an unbroken wholeness. There is no sexual experience, there is no emotional experience, there's no love experience, there's no experience better than that. The experience of unity, of oneness, of total connection with what is. When I started to make my first film, The Dance of Infinity, it was forced for me since I'm not professionally educated as film director. So it took me some uh, years uh, to understand uh, what is the essence of discoveries of uh, these uh, famous human beings, great teachers of humanity, like Stan Grof, Ken Wilber, uh, His Holiness, Dalai Lama, etc., etc. And then I realized that uh, the main message, uh, and I transmitted this message in my film, The Dance of Infinity, is discovery that the main reason of our human problem is the lack of connection with infinite space in our uh, inner dimension, in our uh, soul and psyche and our spirit. We forgot God, we forgot uh, infinity in us. And so uh, the main recovery process, the main healing process is finding again and uh, restoring this uh, extremely important uh, connection. And this is the main secret of great masters. All masters from the field of spiritual traditions, from the field of great science, psychology, quantum physics, and from the fields of art, you mentioned David Premal, uh, and also there is Boris Grebenchikov, a Russian rock star, they shared the same great intuition and great discovery. So, uh, using modern language, uh, we can say that on technical level, spirituality is infinity inside us and everywhere, respectively. And uh, we are keeping a life, life uh, real, so to say, connection with this infinite space. And if we feel infinity inside us, then since the world uh, as a human beings is a kind of duplicate of our inner states, since we are projecting our inner space on everything, our perception of other human being and the world is not limited. As uh, William Blake said, if the doors of perception were cleaned, everything will appear as it is infinite. So it's the real secret of great masters and uh, it's a technical uh, explanation of spirituality. Also, uh, we can find a great definition and great uh, explication of uh, spirituality in great spiritual traditions, for example, in Buddhism, in Christianity, in uh, Hesychasm, uh, its mystical tradition of uh, Orthodox uh, Christianity, uh, and in all other great mystical tradition in Advaita Vedanta, in Taoism, uh, in uh, Sufism, uh, everywhere. Uh, and we can use traditional maps of spirituality, but in our time, we also have great new understanding of what is spirituality uh, through research made by, for example, uh, Ken Wilber. He published a book, Integral Spirituality, where he presents a modern, great map of what is spirituality based on all modern research. And also, uh, Stan Groff provided his own version of what is spirituality. It's a tremendous map of our inner space, uh, Groff cartography of consciousness. And spirituality uh, in Groff language is holotropic and transpersonal states. Also, another great transpersonal psychologist, by the way, by Australian origin, Roger Walsh, published a fantastic book, Essential Spirituality. And it was Roger Walsh uh, who confirmed that uh, all spiritual tradition, all great world religion, despite the numerous superficial differences, have in essence the same exact uh, similar seven, seven practices. They are uh, common for all spiritual traditions. And my teacher, Arne Mindel, discovered another modern map of spirituality. Uh, it's modern development and uh, expansion of ancient maps, uh, shamanic, Taoist, and Hinduist, first of all. This process mind map of reality.
The Dance of the Ancient One, it's uh, title of his uh, two uh, last books. So, the uh, numerous modern approaches to understanding what is uh, spirituality, and uh, there is no need to limit yourself uh, using only one. It's my position. So there are many words that, and many maps that can describe and try to uh, embrace this notion of spirituality. But would you agree then, if we try to simplify it and put it into the very essence, it's actually our connection and our relationship with uh, God, with uh, infinity, with the source of on life? Essential, on a central level, it's exactly the same. Yeah. A real uh, life connection with infinite uh, essential state of every human being. And uh, of course, uh, starting from yourself. <laughs> Uh, the second question will relate to the first one. How would you describe a truly spiritual person? People have moments of enlightenment uh, and we are exploring into something. But we have to be careful, I think, say, this one's enlightened. I've met a number of gurus. The disciples said they're enlightened, but uh, their behavior didn't look very enlightened to me. I mean, I don't want to name any names, but uh, I think we have to be careful with this kind of ultimate naming. We're all in process. In Zen, are you enlightened? What well, was always taken as a trick. Um, because you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. If you say yes, then you clearly, no individual is enlightened. But if you say no, then you're just an ignoramus. You're an idiot. Present stage of scientific development, there are certainly some limited things we could find about, about someone who claimed they were enlightened. So for example, if someone said, I'm enlightened, I have no attachments or aversions or something like that, you then measured their physiological responses and showed them some erotic or threatening stimuli and they were showing all sorts of big reactions and then their claim that they're totally unattached or something like that you'd begin to wonder a really enlightened person would say well now i'm getting to be an ordinary person the openness and love for all your states of consciousness consensus reality dreaming projections and also this essence level so we go back and forth between them this is our great chance, I think, as a human race to help the universe also become more conscious. When we are succeed to be in a, its a real nature, this, this is, and the Dzogchen teaching is considered, uh, then that is a realization, or that is the illumination. We can call different way. Why? Because uh, in our real nature, we say also, we have infinite potentiality. You become yourself. You are face to face yourself. You are the beginning, you are the end. You are the human being, you are the self, you are the being, you are the God. This brings you to, in your experience, is enlightenment. Nothing more than that. There is a great uh, Zen koan uh, saying that before enlightenment, chopping wood carry water. After enlightenment, uh, chopping wood, carry uh, water. From outer point of view, nothing changes. From my personal experience of uh, interviewing and also I'm student of uh, some great uh, spiritual teachers and human beings, they are absolutely normal. Uh, they are uh, in the same human dimension as uh, all human beings. And so if human being is really enlightened, he or she doesn't create any borders between your self or himself and all other human beings. Since uh, I'm sure that the mission of all enlightened human beings is to share the experience of enlightenment, experience of an unlimited way of living. Be sure that from their own side, they, they don't create any borders, any barriers to uh, be in the same state and to share the experience of enlightenment. They are normal, absolutely normal. And also they are very kind, human, uh, uh, compassion. The mission of all human beings is to share and to spread experience of enlightenment. A, a kind of enlightenment epidemic. <laughs> <laughs> 
we need this pandemic enlightenment, <laughs> not yeah, pandemic coronavirus. <laughs> the best uh, epidemic. Since there are lots of spiritual seekers, and people, of course, seek spirituality or enlightenment in various ways, you know, through religion, through tradition, through art, through many, many doors, they're trying to open the doors, basically, go through the borders, dissolve all separation. What are the obstacles or what are the traps that people may face on their spiritual path? What should they remember to avoid these uh, obstacles and traps? The impact of materialism on the increase of suffering of the world uh, cannot be uh, ignored. Uh, the greatest opium. This is a more severe opium, more severe drug than anything we have ever encountered, the human consciousness has encountered. This, this addiction to materialism is probably the biggest drug addiction that we have to overcome. I read the, some of the poetry of mystics of different cultures, and they talk very passionately, almost sexually, about this this yearning for God, this hunger for connection with, with the divine, um, this thirst inside of us. And for many reasons, some people are drawn away from the thirst for the true spirit into the tempting world uh, around us where external things are gonna make you happy. You know, if you have the right computer or the right car or you have the right relationship. Say that the most important thing is not the is not having a particular experience of spiritual intensity. That the, the, the beginning that's important, but what's ultimately more important is having absolute confidence. Spiritual experience comes and goes, but when the doubt's given up, as my own teacher taught me, then you're then then you're then you're free. The spiritual quest is the most important thing you can do in the world. But then again, don't take it too seriously. That would be, that would be a problem, you know. It's uh, clear from ancient times that the main obstacles we are creating by ourselves. So we are the problem. Uh, if you look deeply, what is our problem? It's first of all uh, uh, the lack of real knowledge about who we are. Uh, the knowledge about reality. It's confirmed by modern psychological research uh, that, for example, the main obstacle for creativity is not knowing how creative we are. What are our possibilities to create? And also uh, that we don't believe that we are creative. But if, for example, we permit ourselves to be more creative, like ch children, we uh, are in a flow of creativity. And we understand that we can create. So first of all, uh, it's the absence of uh, a living knowledge how spiritual and how creative we are. I'm sure that every human being uh, has the same absolute infinite nature, the state of enlightenment. The seed of enlightenment uh, is shining through our life, through our activity in every moment. If uh, we are sure that uh, we are infinite, and if we have real knowledge, and real knowledge is uh, our direct experience. Uh, traditionally, in modern situation, real knowledge we can get from enlightened uh, human being, from different field of uh, work, uh, from uh, experience. This human being can be, for example, a spiritual teacher. And the mission of spiritual teachers is uh, to spread uh, the experience of enlightenment. But also I discovered that it can be uh, great artists and great science and the source of uh, achievements of great human beings is also connection with infinite source. Enlightenment, uh, the seat of enlightenment that we always, I am sure that uh, number one is uh, real knowledge. We are infinite. And second is real experience. Yes, we have this experience through relationship with other infinite being, uh, through creativity, doing different projects and arts and everything, discovering everything, and uh, through everyday life. 
And when we have this experience, uh, we can develop, we can continue, uh, we can work with uh, concrete obstacles. So despite the fact that there is one fundamental obstacle, not knowing that we are have infinite source, there are numerous relative obstacles. Enlightenment work, developmental work, evolutionary work is everyday practice. Every day we can develop, develop, and develop, and develop, and eliminate more and more obstacles. And uh, I think that uh, it's based on my long-term personal experience and also on my scientific experience. I am also a scientist. I was educated uh, in best uh, Soviet schools of science, Moscow Physical Technological Institute, and also I'm professional philosopher and psychologist and artist and publisher and teacher. And so from uh, all field of my experience, I discovered a kind of uh, integral, integral vision of what is human evolution, human development. And you know, uh, in classical psychological understanding, human personal development is first of all development of our IQ. And measuring of IQ is based on mathematical intelligence. 30 years ago, it was discovered that besides mathematical intelligence, we all have emotional intelligence. It was a kind of a blockbuster, a bomb in psychology. But uh, later, it happens that we also have political intelligence, moral intelligence, musical intelligence, physical intelligence, etc., etc. Ten main uh, a kind of line of inner development. And uh, they have different laws, different structures, different a kind of uh, help, uh, different instruments for development. So it's much more complex picture of development. Also, besides vertical development, from first class to high school to Nobel winner or Olympic Games champion in different fields, we also have another dimensions of development. We all have spiritual dimensions of our development. It's completely different from vertical step-by-step -step, uh, development. Since spiritual development is becoming more and more unity with everything. Unity with other people, unity with animals, unity with nature, with unity with uh, uh, universe. So you are undivided from universe. This is uh, another technical description of what is spiritual enlightenment. But uh, to make the story more complete, uh, we have also another dimension uh, of development. It's connected with arts, with creative expressions. For example, if we uh, talk on Russian language, for our English speaker language, it was uh, completely unclear, since it was not expressed, not understandable for them. But this example says uh, that people can perceive only that is expressed, manifested in different ways, through words, through arts, uh, through material objects, through social systems. Only manifested can be perceived. So our great mission of every human being is manifest as much as possible. The infinite uh, source of earth, the treasure of uh, our inner space. But in essence, this is artist path, artist way. So every human being potentially is great artist. Every, absolutely every human being. It's a pity that only minority of uh, human population uh, can realize uh, this great gift because we don't know, because we uh, don't have appropriate tools. Also, we all have different obstacles connected with age, connected with different traumas. Trauma of womb development, trauma of birth, trauma of early childhood, trauma of schools, of different uh, age in different situations. And the best tools for uh, recovering, for eliminating these obstacles is psychotherapy. Of course, the best uh, psychotherapy, best psychological tools, transpersonal, musical psychotherapy, artistic psychotherapy, non-limited by academic psychotherapy. We also can develop, studying the essence psychotherapy, I discovered 
uh, that for many centuries psychotherapy existed in human culture as undivided part of our everyday life and culture life. And I found ancient methods of uh, psychotherapy. I use special term primordial psychotherapy to describe 12 ancient practices for the care of the soul. So I am teaching these 12 practices. Since I found that it's much more easy to study these 12 ancient uh, practices and to apply uh, in your life than to study traditional psychotherapy and use it. The fourth uh, dimension of our development is our relationships. Our families, uh, our relationship has uh, four main modalities. Love, first of all, man and woman, uh, family, uh, then parental uh, relationship, uh, parents and uh, ch child, then uh, creativity, co-creativity and co-working, uh, co mm -hmm. cooperation, uh, and uh, the fourth general um, modality of relationship is friendship. And so we can develop every dimension of our relationship with other human being. And we can use our relationship as tools for evolution to develop, 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 develop. As Roger Walsh said in my film, Tools for Evolution, every connection, every relationship uh, can be much more conscious and uh, can feed, can facilitate our mutual evolution. Uh, so there is also fifth uh, dimensions of our development and it's connected with external activity, with business, with social work, with different uh, external project. And so we can also be masters of business and external realizations. It's also, uh, we can study, we can understand the essential laws of, of how to be a master of this evolution. And also, there is the six uh, dimensions of uh, our personal evolution and it's connected with center, with middle path, eliminating uh, extremes in our life, great balance of human being, middle path of all human being. It's also extremely important dimensions of our human evolution. So six main uh, dimensions of development. I presented in popular way in film Tools for Evolution. Could you please just name all these six dimensions again? Dimensions of personal evolution, vertical evolution, the path of champion, spiritual evolution, unity with everything, healer evolution, to be psychotherapist for yourself, uh, then uh, artist evolution, creativity, uh, then relationship development for modalities, and center, balance, uh, evolution, middle path of uh, all human beings. Oh, very interesting. By the way, I'm just curious myself, <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what are the um, famous people participated or you were talking to while making your film on uh, tools for evolution? Of course, uh, my teachers, uh, Arnie and Timmy Mendel, founders of uh, Process Walk, of course, Stan Grove, Ken Wilber, uh, Roger Walsh, Michael Murphy is the founder and director of the SLN Institute in California, and Sylvia Nakash, the great masters of uh, yoga of voice. My friend, uh, Russian theater director and actor Vadim Dimchok, another great friend, Orthodox priest, Father Yevmeni Peristey, uh, and many, many other, other great uh, masters. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, I'm already very curious to have a look at this particular film because I only watched The Dance of Infinity and was really impressed and inspired by that movie. And I would highly recommend to watch that. And of course, I'm sure everyone would be interested to have a look at the tools for evolution. Going back to our subject, I want uh, to ask you about uh, meditation. There are so many types and kinds of meditation. And there are so many ways how people understand 
what meditation is for them because some people only think of meditation as like pure silent meditation others just they have visualization sensualizations and that's what meditation is for them and it is working for them uh, for the third category it could be something similar to prayer where they just use words or not it's more like dialogue with god <laughs> restoring connection with the source so for, for for another category it could be really creative process <laughs> where they just get into the flow and they let this potential and infinity and the source work through them and they're more like channelers of all this abundance and beauty and creativity and of course they experience they have this unique very beautiful experience during this meditation so what would you say is the key in all of these experiences what's the main role of meditation for you looking at the reflection of the spirit but not the spirit itself and when i turn around and i uh, realized that meditation was the only way forward. It was the only way to uh, a path where, th that, uh, where I could confront my own true reality. It's, a, it's, my, it's one of my deepest states of meditation. When I start painting, um, it takes me just a little moment where I'm still in my mind maybe, but after maybe a few minutes, hopefully, or maybe after you know half an hour, all of a sudden there's a change and I enter a different reality. It's almost like I'm pushing through a veil and I'm in this other reality where what I do is not even an act of me anymore. I feel like what happens on the canvas is something that is coming through me. Almost anybody, and most people in fact, have had at least a glimmer of this ultimate unity consciousness. Whether they're listening to music, or watching a sunset, or making love, or just walking in nature. And all of a sudden, pow! Their separate self is gone, and they are everything. This is their self, and they're like, ah, I knew this, I knew this. This is home, this is it, this is myself, my God. And so that's, you know, extraordinary. Process mind is the intelligence behind your dreams, but it's also the intelligence behind all your spontaneous movements when you're very relaxed. It's the intelligence behind making you catch certain things, catch your attention or flirt with your attention. Oh, it's an intelligence. You need to be relaxed to pick it up. That's the basis of the process mind. And the perhaps the strongest experiences, you can do it in meditation, opening your mind and relaxing, but movement and letting yourself move, the being the dance of the angel, letting the universe move you, get you in best touch with what Jung would have called today the unconscious, I think. It's really the universe. It's a force field that we experience. Thank you for good questions, Oksana. About meditation, what uh, you said about meditation is everything is true. Since meditation is a kind of general name for all our inner research activity and uh, all our uh, kind of development towards realization. It's uh, meditative methods, tools, exercise, methods of research. General uh, name for all that is meditation. But uh, we can make this thought more clear if uh, we uh, look, first of all, on traditional definition of meditation in main spiritual tradition and on modern meditational research. And so we have now huge research, for example, meditation as uh, in the field of stress management. 
mindfulness based on uh, initial research by John Kabat-Zinn. Over 1,000 papers and books. And so it's uh, really very good stuff. And uh, other meditation research, benefits of meditation, stage of meditation from uh, different spiritual traditions. And another set of research based on uh, using different uh, tools, modern technology, like mind mirror, like music, uh, biofeedback, uh, and uh, other tools, or uh, isolation tanks. Also, uh, we have uh, great uh, phenomenological research. So going to tradition, uh, in uh, main spiritual tradition, for example, in Hinduism, in Taoism, uh, in, especially in uh, Tibetan Buddhism, the essence of meditation is to connect with reality. And it means, first of all, to go beyond the cage of our normal uh, mind functioning our thoughts, go beyond thoughts. It's the essence, simply speaking, of meditation. But what, is, what it means? It doesn't mean to reject thoughts. Uh, since uh, thoughts is also part of our real life, but they uh, create uh, like a cage, not transport cage, and we can't appreciate, we can't connect with the uh, uh, real life. And so uh, meditation is mainly a tool to uh, become real. And it, uh, traditionally, it has two stages. First stage is uh, clarity and uh, calm state to find yourself since if you are going uh, with uh, your thoughts, uh, you can't find the essence. You can't find who you are, the essence of uh, mind. And uh, second stage, you are uniting more and more with all sense functioning, uh, with uh, your movement, sitting, walking, and uh, it's a kind of classical type of vipassana meditation. And uh, you grow, you grow, and you extend your connection, real connection with yourself, with your clear, uh, calm state to all aspects of your everyday life, to all movements in your life. So all movements, it means, first of all, thoughts, talking, moving, sitting, emotions, don't distract you anymore. You are uh, congruent, you are uniting with everything. It means that you are much more real. And uh, when you become completely real, it means enlightened. There are no obstacles between you and everything. Uh, you are unified with everything. Uh, so uh, meditation has traditionally two steps. Calm state, first step, and movement, uniting with everything, with real life. And it means, first of all, on technical language, uh, going beyond thoughts or uh, using other language. It's tool for becoming real. And everything works perfectly for different people. And uh, this is why there are so many, hundreds and thousands of different meditation tools devices and uh, practices. Some people, instead of going into this beautiful experience of connection and flow, they get stuck into their old traumas, into very dark places of their soul, and they are struggling to break through. So if you have any advice, recommendation, you're very welcome to share that with us from your great experience of you know, psychotherapy work. Many spiritual systems say, if you look within, you will find God. God, you are God. Um, God is within you. But people who have been traumatized or abused or hurt in some way look inside and what they find is a barrier between them and who they really are. So watch your fear, watch what you're afraid of, watch yourself, when I'm afraid, oh, I am afraid. And then you catch yourself and say, that's my ego. I have to come back to the self. To come back to the self, uh, the second thing would be 
be silent. Find spaces for mm -hmm. silence. It's too much noise. Everybody has problems. Be sure that every human being has trauma of birth, trauma of early childhood. Since our parents were not enlightened human beings. And we are not enlightened. And so we are creating obstacles for each other every day. And uh, so uh, we have multiple tensions and uh, obstacles. Uh, and so our mission is to work with all that. If we understand that obstacles are part of life, conflicts are part of life, and we, we understand that uh, we have our missions, our task to clarify our life, to work with obstacles, and it creates appropriate uh, right motivations. If our life is obstacles and um, problems, the only way is working with obstacles and problems, number one. And second uh, is uh, to keep this warrior spirit. Since as Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss and don't be afraid of anything. This is the motto of uh, Hero's Journey. It's absolutely real. And so heroism, is the main energy of our life. In other words, it's our mission, it's our meaning of life, it's our destinations, it's purpose of life. Uh, everything is kind of heroism. Fall number one is great aim to, evolu uh, to develop, to be creative, uh, to e evolutionate more and more and more and more, uh, to uh, realize infinite states. And then to walk, to uh, discover, to find the appropriate methods, uh, to find the appropriate uh, supporters, advisors, um, psychotherapists, technologists. Uh, if uh, something don't work, use other methods and tools, etc., etc. Experiment, research, uh, look for appropriate sources. And from my experience, for every problem, we can find the appropriate method to uh, work with this problem and uh, to solve it. Okay, thank you for this part. I was just wondering, maybe this is the problem when a person meditates just by, you know, oneself. So you're just still limited by your cage, by your own perception and interpretations of your old trauma or whatever. So you're kind of overloaded with words and negative meanings for yourself. And or maybe you, you are locked from your emotions and feelings that you, you know, you are just unable still to handle and digest, <laughs> you know, yourself, process yourself. What do you think would be possible solutions? I mean, for me, the obvious one would be find another person. <laughs> Because <laughs> most likely, uh, the specialists, of course, professionals are better because when they know how psyche operates, <laughs> or find someone uh, spiritual who will just dissolve everything by transmitting light and love back to you. Or here maybe you, you can say a few words more about uh, transpersonal psychology because I know that most likely, you know, everyone heard about it, but not necessarily know what exactly is so special about transpersonal psychology or what instruments transpersonal psychology is using and in what particular situations it's probably could be one of the best tools to deal with. So could you please be in the pioneer and the teacher in this area? You are the best one to answer this question. If we don't like it when physics is physics and psychology is psychology and spirituality is there and, and politics here, we want them, you know, more together. Science, materialistic science, would see us as, as material objects. Uh, but uh, in these holotropic states, we also discover that uh, we can transcend space uh, and time. And we are basically a field of consciousness that has no limits, no boundaries. If only we could be more awake to recognize that every aspect of reality is, is sacred, but we don't see it.
Oksana, you are absolutely uh, right. Remember uh, from the, uh, your first questions we started our talk. Uh, the main obstacles we are creating by ourselves. So, uh, if we uh, uh, encounter obstacles in our meditation, look carefully. What cage you are in now? Uh, I remember uh, my own personal experience when I put myself every uh, evening to meditate for one hour uh, using uh, a kind of mantra. Be here and now, be here and now, asking, I am here and now, yes, I am here and now, but nothing changed for many months. I was absolutely stupid and invisibly for myself, I put myself into a cage of limited understanding of what is be here and now. And only after I met His Holiness Dalai Lama in 1982, I realize how stupid I was trying to be here and now. Since be here now in meditation means infinite here and now. And I was enclosed here and now. How to go beyond close understanding of yourself and reality? Number one is ecstatic experience. Shamanism, using the definition of Mir Chaliadi, is archaic technology of ecstasy. We are moving from stasis, closed uh, uh, kind of state of ourselves. From ancient times, the best tools for evolution was connected, at least on initial uh, stage, uh, with going beyond limitation through ecstatic practices, through shamanism, through tantra, love through different uh, artistic exploration, through spiritual methods, uh, and through uh, modern transpersonal psychology methods. And uh, from my field, transpersonal psychology, for example, one of the best tools for getting uh, experience of ecstasy in non-ordering states of consciousness is holotropic breathwork, uh, discovered and developed by Stanislav and Christina Grof. And uh, your personal experience of holotropic breathwork moves you uh, beyond your limitations and uh, you are getting a direct experience of infinity and uh, your picture of reality and yourself change completely. And many of my students after sessions of holotropic breathwork have much more higher level of meditative experience. So the, everything that you named, right, is part of what transpersonal psychology is about. These ecstatic experiences, holotropic breath, and when, when in what situations people may think about doing something with, say, transpersonal psychology. Transpersonal psychology was first psychological project that started uh, to approach to human being in full spectrum of our life. Uh, it means that uh, in all dimension of our psyche, and Stanislav Grof was first who provided extended map of psyche, including uh, perinatal matrices, system of condensed experience, normal uh, human biography dimensions, and transpersonal experience. And uh, so transpersonal, simply speaking, is spiritual experience on general language. Uh, and uh, it has a very important characteristics since it's infinite resource for all human beings. And I think it's stupid not to use this resource in uh, our creativity, in our business, in our relationships. Uh, since transpersonal dimension is uh, first of all connected with creativity, uh, with creating you, with understanding reality. And uh, I am sure that uh, in our time, uh, everybody had to have this experience to be more healthy, to be more creative, uh, to be uh, more uh, realized in uh, every dimension of our life. So transpersonal uh, psychology can be useful for relationship work, for trauma, birth trauma releasing, uh, since, you know, birth trauma is the basement for all our psychological traumas. And without releasing birth trauma, it's impossible to have um, a kind of a healthy psyche. So for people who want uh, to develop, uh, to evolutionate, it's uh, very important. And also modern transpersonal research uh, brings a new light on meditation. 
scientifically proved data. Science discovered new dimensions in traditional methods of meditation. For example, mind mirror. Yeah? Uh, Asian Buddhists uh, didn't have uh, uh, electroencephalogram uh, devices, and so they were limited in understanding of how a psyche functioning. Or, for example, Monroe Institute activity connected with a new type of music. Neural. Neural music, yeah. yeah. So it's a new technology, and uh, it's a kind of new tools for meditations. It's all, uh, generally speaking, transpersonal field of knowledge. Uh, connected with, first of all, with uh, uh, spirituality, spiritual traditions. Uh, so in our time, uh, we uh, uh, understand much more the importance of uh, spiritual tradition and spiritual resource in everyday life uh, for every human being. I guess I just want to add and probably add in spiritual crisis, you know, when traditional methods not always are able to help <laughs> when someone has like energy shift and Kundalini awakening and all kinds of uh, crazy experiences. It's new understanding of um, a spiritual crisis uh, introduced by Stanislav and Christina Grof, spiritual emergency. And by the way, this terminology and this approach was introduced into DSM-4 and DSM-5 is um, diagnostic uh, manual for mental illness in uh, USA. And so uh, it's uh, now accepted by academic psychology, these uh, very important uh, transpersonal discoveries. Amazing. I just had the thought that, uh, as you said, transpersonal in a way can be interpreted as spiritual and spiritual we interpret it as the one which doesn't see any separation, which is kind of the unity or all embracing. Uh, and uh, the way you described and the way I perceived or learned transpersonal psychology was that I remember after maybe for the first workshop I had with you, I came back home and told my mom, mom, I think transpersonal psychology is my religion. But you have to remember, it's not just religion. I like it because it's about everything, because it actually unites mythology, history, psychology, shamanism, <laughs> psychotherapy, art. And if you look into like quantum physics, you can say, yes, this is there as well. And kind of sciences and it just all embracing integral things united knowledge and belief systems and uh, art and isn't it beautiful <laughs> and it yeah, doesn't it's great. It's great. Uh, yeah, to it... include all richness of our life exactly uh, all... but of course transpersonal psychology is not religion it's first of all science new type of science open and uh, kind of big science uh, that uh, seriously uh, approaches everything, art, religion, spirituality, and uh, this approach is based uh, on research. Yeah. Yeah, of course, I mean, I didn't mean religion in, in a classical religion, but it's more like, that's what I believe in, and that's what yeah. I would like to support. That was my <laughs> main conclusion. I have a couple of last questions to you. One is, how would you describe healing in general? So what is healing? When does healing happen? And is it connected to spirituality in any way, in your opinion? You see, you were looking for, for roots of your emotional and psychosomatic problems. Uh, but ultimately, uh, the, the healing happens by discovering that you are not whole, that you're sort of identifying just with a fragment of yourself. The, the definition of suffering is life lived apart from spirit. And the definition of happiness or fulfillment is life lived as spirit. It's the same life, it's the same universe. It's, are you one with it, or are you separate from it? Healing, psychotherapeutic healing, psychological healing, or, and also physical, energetical healing, uh, is uh, a kind of going to uh, higher states of well-being. 
And this uh, movement is uh, happening through kind of uh, releasing obstacles to these more high states. And so diseases, tensions, psychological problems are obstacles on this uh, pathway to higher states of well-being. So this is general description of what is healing. Another language becoming more and more whole. But all our concepts of healing, it's not enough to comprehend, to present a kind of big picture of what is healing. Since the paths to healing are infinite, as our path to uh, our inner self, to our path of God, and to limit uh, our definition of healing by some set of uh, particular definitions is uh, to limit the process of healing. I see healing as infinite process. And so we can understand its essence, but uh, there are numerous infinite uh, pathways for healing for, for every particular human being. And so we can just experiment and find what is most appropriate. How do you envision the future? So we all are on our way to enlightenment. We all are, of course, along the way, healing ourselves, trying to become more wholesome, more real. <laughs> What's the future of the humanity? What, where are we going to? Where are we heading to? With all these beautiful tools that you name, that you research and put together, how do you envision the ideal future for us? Genuine sense of concern of well-being of other is the ultimate source of happiness and also happiness on the level of a family level, community level, on national level or international level or even with the whole universal. I hope that more and more people will understand more and more uh, six main dimensions of personal development create more spiritual and more creative society. My mission is to help uh, with our mutual evolution in all possible ways, through films, through books, through online programs, and through all uh, imaginary activity. And here I would like you to mention, to say a couple of words about the film you're working now, uh, that you just mentioned before we started recording this interview about the journey of the hero. And yeah. what's, the, what's your main goal? Because I think that would be amazing for others to hear what you are doing and <laughs> what your goals are. I finished two films from my evolutionary trilogy. First one, The Dance of Infinity. It's the message of great masters about our infinite states and also advice of how we can reconnect with our infinite states. Second film, Tools for Evolution, is new advanced uh, navigation tools uh, for our personal development, six dimensions of personal development. And then I realized that picture is not complete and uh, we have to have knowledge about the main energy of our life and development, heroism. And when I started to study what is heroism and heroic journey, I found that instead of one dimensional hero's journey prevailing, dominating in our culture everywhere, in all fields, uh, in reality there are eight heroic journeys and different versions for uh, men and women. And so the third film from Evolutionary Trilogy is presentation of this my uh, discoveries to make the picture of human evolution complete. The working title of film is Heroes Journeys. New Horizons. My evolutionary trilogy is a kind of evolutionary toolkit for human beings. My big dream is to help humanity uh, to be free from media slavery, so to say. And this media slavery is imposed by factories of reality like Hollywood, Bollywood, Las Vegas for uh, uh, adult people and uh, Disneyland for children and also through all TV channels uh, since uh, the activity of all these factories of reality is based on original uh, Joseph Campbell discovery of uh, one dimensional heroic journey. This is uh, in fact mythological journey 
and there are uh, seven other completely different uh, heroic journeys. And so I want to help uh, humanity to release this uh, media slavery, both through my films and also through my books. Now I'm finishing book, uh, Heroes Journeys, and also through my Russian version of online course. And uh, next year, I will prepare on also English version of this online course. Thank you so much. I think that was a beautiful ending for our interview. And I hope that English versions, and you said there is a French version available for a couple of your films, will find its way to the English-speaking world. Okay, so I'll let okay. our uh, audience know that, yes, you are looking for producers or sponsors to help you continue filming your current projects. So thank you so much for being with us. And maybe, depending on the feedback from everyone who will be watching this, we may invite you to have another talk and maybe questions and answers session with us one day. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me and thank you, everybody who uh, participated in uh, this uh, program. Good luck. Thank you.